since there was a mix up between F and, and U and G, uh, let me quickly state where we are. We're looking at the inverse problems K U equals G, K compact, and uh, we restrict ourselves to uh, viewing a singular. Uh, a regularization that's based on the singular value decomposition sigma k u k and v k with regularization function g alpha of sigma. So uh, we saw that we can only get an estimate for the second error term if uh, we have an additional condition either on the right hand side on, on G or on uh, the minimum norm solution U plus. And uh, we require an additional um, um, condition on U plus, meaning that we, we have a vague idea where the solutions of our, um, of our problem actually come from. Okay, so we say that uh, in definition 3.7, U plus satisfies a source condition of order mu if and only if u plus is in the range of k star k to the order of mu. And uh, we allow for mu to be real and we'll see what that means a little bit later. The idea of course is the larger mu, the smoother or more differentiable is u plus. And we already noted that uh, for our problem of computing the antiderivative, um, when k is uh, computing the antiderivative, then mu equals to one means that uh, this is twice differential, that u plus is twice differentiable and so on. Okay, um, now the basis um, for all the um, estimates that we will derive is theorem 3.8. And now we assume that uh, u plus satisfies the source condition of order mu. So it can be written as u plus is k star k to the order of mu times v. And uh, then um, it holds that uh, the quantity we're interested in, the error we're interested in, k alpha plus g minus k plus g squared can be bounded by some functions phi mu alpha squared, which of course is bounded, is of course based on the g alpha of sigma that define the regularization function. You see it here, I don't have to read it, times the norm of v squared. And the proof is hopefully relatively simple. First of all, we have that uh, u plus is k plus g. So that's the definition. Of course, the idea is, um, I didn't write this down, g of course must be in the definition uh, in, the, um, in the domain of k plus. So then we can write u plus as one over sigma k, g times vk times uk. On the other hand, if u plus is in uh, the range of k star k to the order of mu, then it can be written as k star k to the mode of mu times v. Now we already know what k, k star k does. It uh, multiplies uh, in the singular system by sigma k squared. So this is nothing but the sum over all k sigma k to the two mu v scalar product with uk times uk. Now um, comparing the coefficients here, we see that this over here must be the same as this one. Um, also, we can note uh, that uh, this already, this also makes sense for any mu, uh, not just for mu integer. So uh, um, when we say it, uh, that um, it, our source condition of order one half is uh, satisfied, then we mean that this equation over here is satisfied uh, with, um, uh, with uh, <laughs> that this equation is, is, is satisfied for that mu. So that this um, that uh, this sum exists for a mu. Okay, now um, and of course, uh, yeah, yeah, this is satisfied for a mu. I'm sorry. Um, now we look at the second error term. So that's kfr plus g minus k plus g for g in the domain of k plus. So we already computed that. That's sum over all k sigma k g alpha sigma k minus one squared times one over sigma k squared g and vk squared. And um, now what we see 
And over here we have, whoops, here we have the one over sigma kg and vk. Now, uh, we already saw that this is equal to the term over here. So we plug that in. So uh, now we have a v u k squared. And uh, well, with that uh, sigma k to the two mu, I put it in here. Then uh, we get the term over here. Um, now, um, we uh, the since we have that uh, all the sigma k are between zero and sigma one, um, if we take the maximum of this over all the sigma in that range, uh, then this is smaller than uh, if, uh, than that maximum. So it's phi mu of alpha square, provided that maximum exists. And so if it does, if it exists, then this is more or equal to phi mu of alpha squared times norm of V squared. And of course, that's again by Bessel's inequality. Okay, um, now that leads to the note that now both terms in the error estimate or in the, um, in the error that we're actually interested in are estimated. So the norm of k alpha plus g delta minus k plus g, that's the difference between what we can get via the regularization on the wrong data, on the perturbed data, uh, and uh, the quantity that we uh, um, um, actually want to have. The difference between these two can be bounded first by c alpha times delta, that was the old estimate, and now this new es estimate phi mu of alpha times v times the norm of v. Um, now we have an estimate that's somehow based on alpha. And of course, what we would like to do is we would like to choose a parameter selection function alpha such that the right-hand side is minimized. Because keep in mind, we're still open with alpha. We can still use L, uh, define alpha as we want, provided um, alpha goes to zero for delta going to zero. So we, might, we would like to choose this in an optimal way, and we'll do that for some examples in the next video.